Daniel, it's lovely to see you here again on the Silicon Lab stand uh, Embedded World 2023. We caught up with you last year to see the developments that were going on, uh, especially lots of wireless uh, on the stand last year. It looks very similar this year, and I heard you've also got some new Bluetooth uh, devices which have just come on, which are really small. That's right, Stuart. Thanks for having me back here. And uh, yeah, wireless is our lives. Uh, so that's really what we're known for in Embedded. Uh, and yes, our latest, latest product is the XG27. It is the world's smallest, you know, matter Bluetooth product. Wow. And so it has a lot of wireless capabilities inside of it, and it especially supports lower battery voltages from battery chemistries like silver nitride batteries, which are very popular in medical devices. Okay. Um, so it's, it's, it's small, it's, it can take in many different kinds of batteries, and it has all the memory that we need for the latest standards. And I understand that the chip is so small, you could you could integrate it into a tooth, for example. It's, That's right. It's talking super tiny. One of our customers is putting it on the back of the molars uh, for a saliva detector, because you can detect all kinds of things uh, from the body chemistry about what's going on in there. So it's kind of a cool application. So um, in, in the space of Bluetooth as well, are you seeing lots of, lots of new applications in the Bluetooth space? Um, in medical, for example, is it gain, gaining traction there? Yeah, uh, so uh, part of the pandemic, a lot of medical care shifted into the home. Right. And that, that kind of accelerated five to 10 years of what would have happened in the medical industry otherwise. They're very slow moving most days. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so they're seeing a lot more technology go through the phone really that application on a phone. So blood glucose meters is, is a big one that's about to go. And, and anything else, the doctors can get data off these devices. They finally trust the communication, they trust the encryption. Now they're ready to pull that data in and make decisions with it. Yep. Now one of the other big themes of Embedded World this year is uh, IoT again. So we've had it for a long time. You know, yes. We've had like a decade of IoT and discussions and billions of devices and things. But I think one of the big challenges we've seen is interoperability and matter is being spoken about everywhere. Can you explain for us what's matter supposed to do for us as, a, as an industry delivering IoT products and what does it do for the consumer yeah. who are sort of tearing their hair out trying to build home automation systems? Yeah, great question. Yeah, and matter is a, it's a very big deal. Um, it solves a lot of interoperability challenges at the layer of software that the cloud companies play in. Yep. And so for a long time, they've trying to been go down all the way to the physical layer, they just don't need to go down there. So Matter runs on existing wireless technologies, like Wi-Fi and Thread and 15.4. Yeah. Uh, so it brings it up to a layer that they can interoperate with each other with, and that's a very important, because now you can buy devices in one ecosystem, maybe Apple, and deploy them in another ecosystem, maybe like a Google ecosystem. Yeah. Um, so that's a big deal. You know, we've been held back for a long time because of interoperability, not because the technology wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, for the consumer, this obviously makes the experience of creating these networks within their homes, it's a lot of DIY, right? Uh, it's, more, it's more doable yeah. now. Uh, and and, and the ad, another benefit that they may not realize, it's much more secure. So these devices have to authenticate themselves onto these networks in a much more controlled way than anything before. And so there's device attestation, device attestation certificates, there's all kinds of things built into the standard to make this go. That's a very good point about security. Security's sort of been a bit of an afterthought. Um, sometimes it's a bit sort of obscurity rather than security. So what's, uh, what are your customers saying to you about the, the security aspect and what are they expecting from you as a silicon provider and a software provider in order to make sure that is really robust? Uh, really good question. So IoT has kind of moved for most industries away from proof of concept into wide deployment. And their businesses and their business models are now dependent on the data, yeah. both directions, pulling sen sensor data out, but also putting new data, whether it's a software update, a security patch, or just changing the device for the user. Um, and as they do that, the kind of proof of concepts are moving kind of from, well, we're, we're moving, transitioning from IT into OT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, IT with my computer, uh, companies understand how to manage my computing device. They have to do the same thing for their rest of their things in their networks now too. Yeah. And so a CIO is not going to let anything on their network unless they know what it is and they can trust it. Yeah. Companies aren't going to base their new business models that they're now thriving on with all this data unless they know it's encrypted and they can trust it. Uh, so security has moved from an afterthought to a forethought at this point and I'm very excited to see that. We've been investing in this for a very long time. So how does sort of matter support that um, forethought approach? Well, uh, the, the spec was built, you know, with a lot more security into it. And so a lot of the standards that were built maybe before in the 2000s time frame were more concerned with making these things actually connect to each other and, and talk. Yeah. yeah, so the way matter 
really has a device has to be able to prove it is what it is. And that means certificates, hardware roots of trust that other ecosystems don't, mand don't mandate. So because this goes interoperable across lots of ecosystems, they had to push it very deep into the standard. A lot of kind of walled garden ecosystems can solve the security in, in, in other ways. Yeah. So they push it all the way down to the chip suppliers and the, and the secure supply chains behind them for injection of these keys and these certificates. Yeah. So it's mandated, that's why. So in terms of the, the security as, as well, is, is this, does the security stop with the data communication between node and cloud or does it go so far when we're thinking about the uh, OT uh, aspect of it, pr actually protecting the nodes themselves so that the, the code and data can't be extracted from the microcontroller? It's both. I mean, so, you know, the, the device needs to be able to prove it is what it is so it can talk to the cloud. Yeah. The cloud needs to know it's talking to the, the right device. device yeah. So there's, there's just, number one, you have to authenticate that. But the devices themselves have a lot of critical data whether it's collecting sensor data, very sensitive, private, like my, my body or whatever it is, yeah. or may have valuable data like network keys that maybe allow you to daisy chain into an attack into the cloud. Um, you know, you've got to protect the integrity of that data over its lifetime. And yeah. governments are starting to mandate this stuff too as well. Yeah. So we think about it as physical and remote attacks. And so you have to, it's a little bit different on how you solve for these things, but we've, we've, we have pretty good solutions. And yes, our customers are expecting it from their silicon providers because they know now they can't do this at the gateway level. That's yeah. what they thought for a long time. Right. It has to be in the node and they have to do it in hardware. Yeah. There has to be something in that device that's not software, so a hardware root of trust of sorts, to be able to prove all of these things. Yeah. And we were talking last night at the IoT Stars event. There's a, a group of people who sort of in the IoT world and uh, they're saying like we've, we've been doing IoT for 10 years now um, and sort of like the billions of devices that were projected haven't appeared. Where do you see us on the, the IoT journey? Are we, are we sort of somewhere in the middle or is it petering I, out or is there still room for growth? I think there's a lot of room for growth. I mean, we do have billions of devices today. I know because we're shipping on the order of a billion devices, just our company. Right. Um, but it's still got a long way to go. Yeah. I mean, multiple industries are now adopting this in, in transportation, in retail, in security, in core industrials, factory automation. It's just kind of starting to spread everywhere. Yeah. You know, for a long time, it was proof of concepts within companies. Now they're saying, okay, we know how to use this stuff. And it wasn't just building the device. They had to build a cloud behind yeah. it. Yeah. They had to figure out how to interact with a mobile phone in their network. So yeah. now they've kind of figured all this stuff out and they're starting to deploy it in mass. Well, thanks ever so much for the great update. We wish you all the best with the new Bluetooth device. It Thank sounds you. very exciting. Yes. And uh, have a great show. Thank you.